So our thermodynamic definition of an entropy change has to do with how much heat per Kelvin you have, right? Those are the units of it, and it's a measurement of how much heat you're removing or adding to a system at a particular temperature. And it's a way for us to at least calculate what, um, why we would get um, an energy flow in one direction versus another. But what's happening at the microscopic level? And why does this energy flow this way? Well, it turns out from the ma microscopic point of view, you may have heard something about um, entropy connected to disorder. And we need to be a little careful with that as a characterization. It gives you a feel for what entropy is and what things have higher entropy and lower entropy, but we need to get um, at what we mean by this disorder, if we like. So what entropy really is talking about at a microscopic level is we can think about what is most probable, okay? So we're going to think about probability for a minute. So if you have a pair of um, dice and so you roll the dice and you get um, uh, snake eyes, a one and a one, you know that's not as likely, so for a total of two, um, if you're trying to move so many pieces on, on a board, like you get ones, you get a two, or if you're playing uh, Settlers of Catan, then you, uh, you know that's not a very likely tile to sit on. Whereas uh, a very common roll would be a roll of where the total is seven. Okay, seven. There are lots of ways to get seven, right? You can do a three and a four. You can roll a one and a six. Or a six and a one. You can roll a four and a three. There are lots of ways. So there are lots of rolls. Rolls that give you a total of seven. There's only one roll out of 36 possible rolls to give you a value of 2, similarly to give you a value of 12, right? So we can go all the way to 6 and 6. That became a bigger die equaling 12. There's only one roll. So what's more common? You're going to get a total of 7 more often than you're going to roll a 12 or a 2. And in Catan, this is the robber. So those of you who don't play that, don't worry about it. The point is, is there, there are more ways to get a total of 7 than there are to get a 2 or a 12. But rolling a 1 and a 1 is just as likely as rolling any other combination if you call them in a, out in order. If you say, okay, I've got two die, one is red and one is white. I want a one on the red and a one on the white. That's just as likely saying I want a two on the red and a five on the white, which is one way to get you a seven. So we can describe what's going on in the particular configuration. This is what we would call a microstate. This is the particular, and this is an example of a macrostate. Now, this is not particularly useful when we're talking about melting atom, you know, melting blocks of ice or something like that. But this gives us the uh, the idea here of a microstate versus a macrostate, and we can extend it past two die to get at this order disorder. If you're playing Yahtzee, which is where you roll five die and you try to get different combinations, if you get five ones, you're really happy, right? It's a Yahtzee. Um, you get lots of points for this. Um, that's not as likely, right? Well, is it? That's the question. We'll make this a three, four, one, four. Okay, this is not a particularly special role. This is equally as likely as this particular in this order, but there are lots of ways to get this kind of a junk role. Um, it, it's not very ordered. So this looks more highly ordered 
to us. It's organized. Their home and this looks more disordered if we like. So disordered in this definition is more likely, okay? For some people who organize, um, I don't know, their socks um, in pairs and then by color, like from white, um, all the white socks and then uh, in a rainbow order, there may just be one particular order where the socks are organized exactly the right way. I'm gonna assume your sock drawer doesn't look anything like that. There are lots of ways for your sock drawer to not be organized, right? And so when we talk about something disordered, what we're really saying is microstates, microstates over here, that are just lots of different ways to sort of get the same thing. So you could have everything is in rainbow order, for example, but a disordered combination is just move one of the socks or move two socks or three socks, that's more disordered. And so when we talk about entropy being a measure of disorder, what we're saying is that the higher probability, like this one, the higher probability, probability to get a seven means a higher entropy. And in general, things happen that are more likely. Things with higher probabilities are more likely, so we tend to go into higher probability states, especially when we're dealing with more than two objects, right? It's possible to roll uh, two twos or two sixes. That happens one every 36 times on average. But five ones, that's a lot less likely, okay? And if we're not talking five, we're talking Avogadro's number worth, then the idea of all Avogadro's numbers worth of atoms lining up in a certain way is highly unlikely. So it's more likely that you're going to be in the higher probability states and our measurement of entropy is measuring this higher probability. So in terms of the statistical count, we say entropy is equal to Boltzmann's constant, that gives us our units, times the natural log of the number of ways, it's called the multiplicity, number of ways of getting a particular microstate, of a macrostate, getting a macrostate. Okay, so there are many ways to get um, two objects in thermal equilibrium, there are fewer ways for them to move away from equilibrium. So this increasing um, entropy is really about increasing higher probability. If we take um, 50 coins and toss them, it's much more likely we're gonna get something close to 25 heads and 25 tails than we are 50 heads or 50 tails. Because there are just many more ways of getting 25 heads and 25 tails than there are of, because there's only one way to get them all exactly the same in terms of our count, okay? So this um, microscopic uh, understanding of um, probability turns out, it does connect to this, this gives us a way to get our absolute um, entropy if we can really count the number of ways of getting a microstate. Once we talk about atoms and in lattices and things like that, we can start to describe the number of different ways to get a particular macrostate, a particular temperature. But what we see is that as our, um, as our temperature decreases, then we can get um, sort of less motion in our crystalline solid and we can tend toward uh, a zero entropy as we tend towards absolute zero, okay? And so that's a way of describing uh, this uh, connection between entropy and temperature. And so this sort of gets us to the third law of thermodynamics in a very hand-waving way that says, as our temperature goes down, our entropy approaches a constant value, generally approaches zero. 